Everybody, how's it going? I'm Seth and welcome back to another video for our survival evolved. Today in this folks video, I'm going to be showing you how to tame a Gigantopithecus. Now, obviously for this, I am going to be showing you how to do it with the use of a tram. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please do not forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guys here on this channel who knows you might just enjoy them. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Setopia Discord. Links to this, of course, you can find down below in the video description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Now, let's get into the tame part of this video. And the very first thing you need to know is that... Uh, in order to tame a Gigantopithecus, you will need the regular kibble, and you won't need a saddle to ride it. I do recommend using a trap because the Gigantopithecus does have quite a few little critters that are hostile towards it, and once it has been aggroed by another creature, you will have a bit of an issue with the fact that you cannot feed it until it is, of course, the... Uh, not hostile anymore so if it's fighting something you cannot feed it now of course this is a passive tame meaning that you have to sneak up behind it and stick the food up its rear end to do that you'll have to place it in your last action bar and so there are several complications there obviously the gigantopithecus will be wandering about so we will be building a trap we're going to start off with a 2x2 two two foundation i do recommend that you use stone but you can of course also use wood then we will surround the first layer with the door frame so these are the single door frames now this will allow us to get back out and on the inside we will just close it off with door frames so it should look like a plus sign on the inside and this is just to honeycomb it off on the outside we will place some ramps and this is of course to allow the Gigantopithecus to follow us into the trap and I will be doing this naked without any armor. Do bear in mind that the Gigantopithecus does do a lot of damage to your armor so you want to protect that and of course as I said you won't need a saddle to ride it. So with that being said and done I'm going to place ramps all the way around just in case I do mess up and that will allow me to reposition the Gigantopithecus and kite it into the trap. Before I get into it I'm just going to put my wyvern in a safe location. I have seen a Gigantopithecus around here and obviously this is a level 150. So with that being said and done let's get into the kiting of the Gigantopithecus as you can see it is quite far away and it is a level 150 so what I'm going to do is I am going to use a long neck rifle with a trank arrow or sorry I meant a trank dart in it and so that will allow me to kite the Gigantopithecus from a far, a, a far enough distance sorry about that folks now it may take a couple of shots as it is moving about uh, that also allows me that extra room so what I need to do now is I want to line myself up with the ramps of the trap I will run all the way up to the ramps won't get in just yet I want to make sure that the Gigantopithecus is still aggroed on me that does of course mean that I may get hit by it once or twice but that is alright now that it is in I can safely start to feed it but in order to do that i needed to lose aggro currently it is focused on my trap as that is what a wild creature that falls into a pitfall trap does happen to do and the reason we honeycombed it off is so that we don't have to try and close off the gigantopithecus after it's fallen in as it will wander about you can do that once the gigantopithecus is in but it is a lot easier if you've already closed off all of the squares of the foundation you don't have to fiddle about with that once it's in so as you can see it has lost aggro now i'm just going to walk into the trap do be careful how as you fall in you don't want to fall on top of it and as you can see it's pretty much locked into that square and it's just a matter of time until it is hungry again and just feeding it its kibble you can of course also use veggies and berries but i do of course recommend the kibble as it is more efficient now that it is locked into that square you can remove the rest of the door frames should you choose to if you want more room to move around it's really entirely up to you don't forget that of course between the first and the second feed with passive times it does tend to take quite a while so you may have to do some waiting Okay, so with that being said and done, as you can see, 
we are nearly ready for the Gigantopithecus to be tamed. This creature does eat quite rare, or in what I'm trying to say is it will take quite a decent amount of time between feeds, so do bear that in mind. And because it is inside this trap, it does also mean that it is not walking itself into any trouble. The walls do also, of course, help other creatures not spot it, therefore not aggro on it. So it does make life a lot easier with regards to taming this particular creature. The Gigantopithecus does do a lot of damage, so do bear that in mind. And it is an amazing creature in terms of carry weight and ability, so definitely one of the things that you want to have. And as I said, of course, as I said, it does do quite a decent amount of damage against armors, which means that it will wreck armors of players quite quickly. So this obviously makes it a very useful creature to have in PvP scenarios. Overall, you can also add, I believe, a helmet onto it, which does sometimes make it look cool depending on the skin that you have on the helmet. And as you can see, it has no acronomy. I might use any ghillie suit or anything, and I have removed the other door frames. Now, obviously, I built my trap out of stone. You can build yours out of wood. It only needs to keep the Gigantopithecus in. Uh, whilst it's angry for a short period whilst you fly out of render distance very important here is you will need a fly because you want to fly out of render distance and it is quicker to do that by flying wait there for a couple of seconds then come back to the trap when the gigantopithecus has lost its aggro and is just wandering around now because it is locked into this single foundation i can access its um feeding Basically, it's fitting animation or prompt from any position should I choose to and It does not allow it to wander too far It also gives me that extra time in case it does decide to turn and walk towards me So I can get out of the way without actually using a ghillie suit So I'm just gonna have to keep my eyes on it now obviously as you can see I did clip the video slightly and I kind of am hoping that uh, I've taken it to the last two feet as with this particular creature it can take quite a bit of waiting just because of how long it takes between feeds. As I said earlier in the video you can of course use the Meho Bears should you choose to but it does take quite a lot longer and you will lose a lot of taming effectiveness. The past, the Gigantopithecus used to prefer the Titanoboa Kibble, which was quite hard to get, but now it has gone down to the regular Kibble, which is a lot easier to obtain. So, you can use the Kibble for lower level Gigantopithecuses, but I personally recommend saving that for your higher level creatures and probably using berries or veggies. It really does depend on how low level the Gigantopithecus is. Now, obviously, I would not tame anything lower than level 100. So as you can see, I am trying to show you what time it takes me to uh, feed this Gigantopithecus another piece of kibble. And so I decided to try and include the last two feeds before the creature is tamed. With kibble, obviously, you will gain a better taming effectiveness, which of course will affect the amount of levels that the creature will get. And so, therefore, it will also affect the stat or points that it gets into its attributes. Obviously, those are randomly distributed, but you do stand a better chance of getting uh, good stats on this creature. So, with that being said and done, once you've tamed it, you can remove the Gigantopithecus either via a mod or uh, the cryopod and as always I recommend that you remove your trap as well just to keep the server clean that way obviously when demolishing the trap you will get back your materials that you have invested in it well at least half of them so that you can build a trap elsewhere should you want to or obviously you can always throw the materials away if you find it easy to farm the materials that is it for this video, folks. I do hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you have, please do not forget to support me on the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. 
Also, of course, for those interested, you can always find me on the Sethtopia Discord. Links to this you can find down below in the video's description as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.